we found one of the absolutely craziest hi-fi collections in the entire world and we're going to take you through it today and i had spencer and tom with me to check it all out so of course the main event is going to be this one over here but we got lots of other vintage stuff that we're going to take you through and just check out what we think is cool and this is going to be a fun one so guys sit back relax enjoy it's going to be just insane literally one of the world's biggest collections all right, so this rack, what do we got here? Bose 901 Series 3. You got the EQ there and the two Bose speakers, very popular. Of course, you know, see them all the time. Now, ones you don't see all the time are like this Sony stereo receiver. So this is going to be like your late 60s, uh, maybe early 70s that's Sony. Cool. So, uh, you know, you flip that open. Little secret there, but mm -hmm. definitely I would say late 60s when you look at knobs like this. Like this wasn't a 70s style. Some 80s stuff. Skip I will over. say that Sony too. Flipping that thing down just feels nice. <laughs> like it did feel cool. Like, this, yeah. all of it. That feels nice. This <laughs> like, feels nice. The only thing that doesn't really feel nice are these dials. No. But all of these, it's very mechanical. Yeah. Very clicky. That's Is that so like cool? Smacks. It leaves a smack down on itself. <laughs> Under that, so we, we were talking earlier about those blue meters, the SX535 that resemble the other one over there. Uh, and then you got a Moran, so it's going to be like maybe a little bit of competition between these. You got well, mm -hmm. that's a 20 watt, this is 52, so it's not a lot of competition. So do you like when Marantz does the silver, or do you like when they have the black dial? I like the silver. Okay. I just okay. think it looks more, it looks a lot more sturdy, and it looks like the build quality is like much more heavy duty, although that's not really the case, but it's just kind of what it looks like to me. It's not really like this, the, the actual tuner, tuning dial. But it's like the whole plate around it that I like a lot better. This piece. Yeah. Does that make sense? So, so that's, that makes sense. I like the black because I think it makes the LEDs pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think but. I agree with both of you. And you know I like the black ones, but the plate on this one actually does look better. But then when the dial with the black one looks better. So if you just took yeah. this, whoosh, pulled, <laughs> ripped that out, put the black one in, you got the Just Audio edition of Mariah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So underneath, we've got a Studio Standard Fisher. This is going to be like your really budget level. It's an RS-1022. Next year, it's going to be not so budget level. you got your Pioneer SX-1050. you got all the knobs, all the buttons, everything you want to touch. You know, I like to touch everything. So oh, yeah. I got that there. Now, one thing that I don't like to touch mm -hmm. are the Pioneer CTF 9191s. <laughs> so one thing about this cassette deck in general uh, from a repair aspect is if you fix it, you put new belts on it and do whatever. If you don't get a new motor in there, the motor most of the time likes to die right away. So if you're out there and you make Pioneer cassette motors, let me know. Hmm. Uh, I got a JVC cassette deck. Is that a San? San yeah. No, that's not a Wait, San. What? what the heck? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So S A N K Y O. It's a Sankyo cassette deck. Did the meters just like push in when you touched them? That's yeah. the most value thing I've ever seen. Yeah, that's bizarre. That's interesting. I don't know what store sold that. So if you guys know what store sold the Sankyo, let us know. You got a Kyra Sarah there. Kyra Sarah stuff's cool. Uh, definitely more 80s. And then over here, it looks like we got a Morantz rack. <laughs> oh, yeah, I oh, I said Morantz. What is it? The Mac. <laughs> it's a Mac, right? So, yeah, we got a Mac rack. My bad. <laughs> totally my bad. What's down the bottom? The, the, the one down, let's start at the top. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm standing, standing uh -huh. already. We're yeah. not going back down. So, up top, we have Yamahas. They're not Morantz. They're not Macintosh. They're Yamahas. I do really like those. This is CR2020. It's the second biggest receiver from Yamaha. These things are like boat, boat anchor big. Like, they're, yeah. they're so <laughs> stinking ridiculous. Really nice receivers. They sound great. They sound a lot like the new AS1200-2200 series. Do. That's actually, they've been compared directly with the new Yamahas and have the exact same sound, minus some of the headphone. Yeah. You like the feel of it? How's it feel? Uh, I love the feel of these. Mm -hmm. I also like how they did their kind of input selector, record out the mode knobs. They, the square knob. They brought these back on the AS1200. I like right here the loudness knob instead of the button or the switch. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. You dial it in exactly how you want it to. You make up the gain with the volume. It'll knob. like as you turn the knob up because it's actually the knob goes in reverse. In reverse. Because as you turn it up, it'll compress the song down, like audio down, and it'll get quieter. 
and then you like can compensate and it just like kicks your speakers way better oh really yeah it's awesome. everybody always asks about the loudness control and i feel like every receiver kind of has a different yeah they all yeah. sound a little different but this one you really can in some like you know compress more than others but this one you can really dial in the amount of compression which is, that's really going to affect your dynamics so you can like still get the loudness effect without while still maintaining like musicality in your music you know yeah. it's sweet it's very you nice, can just yeah. add a slight it's nice the one thing i don't like about these there's two things first off i don't like these switches no, they like kind of degrade the rest of the look but the other thing i don't like is the lights they don't glow really well yeah. so they just have a very faint glow so if you're into that great but if you like brightness like I do in that, like, just, just you know, bold, <laughs> it's not going to do it for you. No matter what you put in it, it's not going to do it for you. Now, going down to things that aren't going to do anything with LEDs, uh, you have all the Macintosh products, and you got, like, nicer vintage Macintoshes. And this is a great, actually, these are great two options to show. So we have some of these in the store right now. So you have the MX-110, and then you have the original edition MX-110. So these are both the same model, but they're from different years. And the main difference, and there's probably more, but you have your switches on the sides, which actually hide under one of these side panels that looks uh, like it's missing from this. Uh -huh. The one we have in the store is this one. Um, so it's really not meant to go in a wood case because if you put the side panel on, it won't fit. But this one actually has everything on the front. So they realized that wasn't the best design, and they changed it. Uh, but this is your original MX-110, uh, and then you're upgraded. So next, we have the biggest room heater in home audio. That's the Macintosh 275. So if you put this on, especially if you have two of them, uh, you won't need to turn your heat on all winter long if you turn this on. So mm -hmm. I can't say that it'll cost less on the electric bill, uh, but it's pretty sweet. And the reason I'm down on my knees is I'm trying to see what the heck is down here <laughs> this is a stereo compensator macintosh c20 so tom this looks like something you'd be into well i mean here, I'm just gonna do it looks this. like a um it looks I, I don't know if it's an amp or just a preamp but there is an input selector and it just has very interesting controls outside of just standard eq stuff i mean you do have your balance phase is interesting i mean mode selector that's like very the yamahas all have that and it filters. But it's kind of interesting. A filter, I mean, you don't get a lot of it. Oh, you do, though. So I think if you were, like, this is definitely a, a mid-60s piece. Looking at it, I was very, like, what is going on with it? But it is it is actually pretty just standard. It's just very old school. It's like they took all the tone controls, mm -hmm. took them out of the receiver, put them in. Because you back then, you were buying all separates. So you're buying a preamp, you're buying an amp, mm -hmm. buying a tuner. But maybe the preamp didn't have all those options and you wanted to do more. Yeah. That's yeah, that, uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, again, yeah, if you like cool. to work out, Len, just pick these up. No, <laughs> I don't like to work out that much. Now, more bows. I got the bows, and I'm not going to touch on the speakers much. We've got more bows, 901s. I got your SAD, SAE Impulse Noise Reduction System. That's interesting. Yeah. I don't really, what's that do, Tom? Just reduces noise, like, from electron, electricity or whatever. Oh. Filters it out. Okay. <laughs> this is an interesting technique. An EQ in the center, space, space dimension, dimension. <laughs> you space 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 can you see it? I don't know anything about no, space it's and no, dimensions. it's like an EQ control. Oh, the whole yeah. thing. Go ahead, that's right down your wheelhouse. Oh yeah, I mean, <laughs> I have to like take a look at. It. Go ahead. It's very. Uh, you got your dimension I, controls, man, and it looks like a built-in oh, reverb. This, this, this would be one that would be very cool to light up because I don't know if you can see this. It's, but, got, the it's got the squares. Yeah. This has the echo built on, which is kind of, you know, a lot of them, they'll just be like reverbs if that's what's going on. But with the echoes, they're very much just showing you that they're just taking a small couple millisecond snippet of the audio and repeating it over and over. And that just kind of gives you like this space effect. The EQ is very nice. These are like the biggest faders of an EQ I've seen on one of these. It's not what I thought you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I don't know, there's just some, like, the mic stuff is kind of mic input, so I don't know what you'd use that. You could do, like, karaoke with it. And there's just kind of, it's, you know, a pretty interesting techniques receiver. There's just kind of some weird, it's a little off, just in, like, what it's What it for, is, yeah. You know? Pretty cool. Got another Project One here. That's very cool. That's, that looks <laughs> bigger. <laughs> yeah, that's a Mark 800. So I don't, I'm not too familiar with all the model numbers, on the project ones but that's beefy that actually looks like one of the ones 
that uh, Nick had down in Florida. He had, I think he had a few of that one. I could be wrong. He'll let us know, though, if we're, if we're wrong on that. So there's another, another project one. Really cool. I mean, lots of meters. Yeah. You got your signal tuner. So just the way they set it up, I think, looks really nice. Now, you got notches in the volume knob, notches in all the tone controls. So they, you know, did a good job making this. Yeah. And look at, I think I can go one side to the other. The panel is so refined. Oh! <laughs> Dude, it almost made it. I was gonna. The, the panel is very reflective. It is. It, like you can. Oh, like, you can see how the lights uh -huh. like shoot up. I mean, Love you can it. like see yourself in it. Oh yeah. yeah. Now, about I can see myself literally in this G sixty seven hundred. This is one of the ones we our first one of our first videos was on this one actually. This is I, I'm not the biggest fan of this line. Uh, it does look cool. It has power meters and a nice digital display. But I liked when they didn't have the digital display on this one. I'm kind of the opposite yeah. with Pioneer. I do like the Pioneer, like. Uh, 3900, 3800, 3700, I call it the beach yeah. receiver. But this one, I kind of think the opposite of. They kept the two big knobs. I wonder if I can go. I'm, I'm not going to be able to go all the way across on that one. We do have one of these in the shop right now. Actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice custom wood case on it. Over here, you got another Yamaha CR820. It's a smaller version of the one we saw right here. And what do we got under this? What the, I don't know what this is. What the heck is that? I'm not sure what realistic that is. It's just another weird It's an STA-2250. So this was the same thing. Early 80s with the realistic. So Radio Shack's trying to compete with all the other guys. They're like, we're going to put a big digital display in the middle of it and a signal meter. And I haven't really seen this one, so I'm thinking that one didn't really take off. I don't think so. It looks weird. It looks weird. The buttons are super weird. The wood case in the back. Yeah, it's, it's an odd bird right there so before maybe before we talk power maybe we should talk about what we're going to talk about right Fair. it doesn't make sense but it will <laughs> so in the stereo wars they kind of all competed on who made, who would make the biggest receiver and we're going to look at you know what well it's kind of considered a receiver but it's not because it's separate so let's take a look at some of the biggest audio ever made. And that's gonna be your Sansui G22000 and your Sansui G33000. Now we gotta ask you guys, if you're on the team or the side of, is it a receiver or is it separate? So let us know in the comments if you think, you know, these are considered a receiver or separate. So I've never seen both at the same time ever in my entire life but today's the day. This is crazy rare. <laughs> like, crazy rare. So now you know you know the wattage? 300 watts for the 33,000, 220 for the 22,000. Tom, have you ever? Not nothing. Did you yeah, know these existed? I, no, no. Now, have, did you, you knew these existed? I knew these existed, and I remember like every now and then I'd search for them and be like, all right, like, where are sure. they? Right. Here you they are. You don't ever, we've seen one or two come through the shop. So lots of cool functions on these. And, you know, first off, you got to have a big place to put them because you got a separate amp, which is down here. You have your power sw switch right there for your different speakers, uh, remote or off right there. And you got that. It just looks cool. It just looks cool, right? You know what it kind of reminds me of in a weird way is like the Mitsubishi stuff. But yeah. like way yeah. bigger <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah um when you go up to the preamp here because i'm on i'm just going to say i'm on team preamp and amp separates because they are separate pieces you cannot connect them together well like the the 901 eqs are they as like just an amp could you hook up a different preamp and that like you could hook up a work, different preamp would that be like that would be good that would, that would sound okay the 901 no you can't use the 901. Nine, well, yeah, yeah, but does that, this is an amp, is that similar to the 901EQ? Like, you can just use this amp as a separate amp, Yes, right? yes. It's, it's a separate amp. It's separate, right? So, yeah. let us know in the comments. We want to hear from literally all of you. Receiver, separates. Let us know. So, again, if you've never seen the Giant Sansui receivers, these are going to replicate just like them. They're going to have the giant knobs right on the front that everybody knows and loves. I love the knobs. It's great stuff. But the other really cool thing about those knobs, besides the look and how they are chiseled and, and beveled and just feel great when you're turning them up, is the volume knob. Spencer, what did you see? So, <laughs> the, the first thing I thought was like, dang, that's a lot of power. 
you know, somebody out there over time, even with the 1980, you know, they have kids, someone cranks that volume knob, boom, speakers go. So what Sansui thought, you put this little kind of lock here where you can actually dial the lock inside of the volume knob to where you want it to stop. Now, if I like really push this thing, yes, it'll move, but like, now you don't want to really push it beyond this lock. So I can move this and say, okay, this is the limit of my speakers. I'm done. I'm safe. I'm not going to that red zone. My speakers are protected. The tuning dial on this is so freaking big. It's like two feet long. That's massive. The numbers are like 72 font and everything else is 11. Yeah. Like, you could yeah. see these numbers from across the room, even me, without my glasses, I could totally see everything that this thing says. So what's the difference between the two? Is there anything else besides the power that makes these two different from each other? Do you see anything? I don't see anything, and I think it is just the power thing. If you wanted the top tier, you wanted the most power, you'd go for the 33,000. If you wanted one step down, you'd go for the 22,000. Yeah, because I mean, honestly, I'm looking at all the switches and they're all the same. Even the mid-range, you have a mid-range there. All the filters are exactly the same. The mode button's the same, the turnover's the same, the audio muting is even the same increment. Like, you got a manual. There's even a manual. That important information, What is? is this a receipt? Oh. It is. Whoa. Okay, so this receiver, does it have a date? Was purchased in October of 1979. This is the G33000. It was purchased in the US and the price, do you want to go with the price? What do you think? What do I think? 1978. 1979. 1979. It was purchased at Music Craft. Okay. There's a store. Give me a price. 1999.99. Tom? So 1979, $1,390. Oh, Very neat, man. you know? Yeah, that's a lot of money back then. Yeah. Oh, cool. man. Love original receipts. It's cool, like, you can go in a store like this or a collection, see a collection like this, and everybody can take something out of it that they like the best. So what did you guys like the best? Let Spencer know, let Tom know, let me know. Put it in the comments. We want to know what you thought was cool. Do you own this? Do you have this? Do we need to come to your house and check out your collection? You gotta let us know below. I had fun today. Maybe we should go look in the back. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs>